what type of foods are good for your body type? As Dr. Lee just said, do all of us even know what our body type is? Well, we're gonna have this discussion with Dr. David Lee, a licensed acupuncturist. Dr. Lee is the inventor of Bisoma and Tetrasoma acupuncture. He has a doctor of philosophy in oriental medicine, as well as a master's in acupuncture. Dr. Lee has written so many books in acupuncture and oriental medicine. I am Amita from Nourish Doc, a global platform for natural and holistic therapies. I am super excited to introduce all of you to Dr. Lee, who's joining us live from Los Angeles. Welcome, Dr. Lee. And thank you. It's my pleasure to join you. Yes, this is about food for your body type. We've heard quite a bit, a lot about how to eat healthy, especially in the last 20, 30 years. People in the United States have been going on to whole food plant-based approach, and they have been seeing a lot of improvement in, the, in their health. So that is an advancement. And of course, we could continue to advance further and further. The next step is not just about knowing what foods are good for our health. Uh, prior to this whole food plant-based movement, it was protein, uh, fats, multivitamins, and carbs. Now people are getting into phytonutrients. Great. That still does not answer the question of which foods are actually good for me. That is the next step. That is related to not only allergy and intolerance, but also how these things could help you to work better in your physiology so that you're on a constant healing mode. Let's go to the next page. Yes, there are four body types. Now, I know some of you are vegetarians, uh, vegans, um, and so there's a lot of uh, different ways of eating also. And so just uh, don't uh, have this information to be just, I'm pushing that onto you, but please be selective. If you don't wanna eat meat, then don't eat meat. Uh, there's still lots of people on earth that eat uh, animal products and we wanna just see how these fit with human beings also. Yes, as you could see with these uh, images, there are four basic body types. Why body type? Because one size fits all does not work. Just like medication, foods have subtle effect. They're either subtly beneficial or subtly bad. And because we consume these foods on a daily basis, the effect will accumulate over time. And that is the reason why you wanna distinguish how your body works so that you could use food as medicine. And yes, um, the point is for you to not only know that uh, or be aware that these foods are good and bad for certain body types, but you also know what body type you have. Let's go to the next page. Yes, so as with the meat and animal products, uh, these are not just protein, fat, and uh, some carb that contain that, and also you know animal uh, nutrition that's in it, such as meat, like a you know uh, beef or pork or chicken or even dairy or eggs, are they all the same if you look at the content or do they actually react differently within the body? Let's go to the next page. Yes, next page. Vegetables, you don't want to talk about the vegetables? Okay. Oh, oh yes, yes, now we're on the vegetable page. Yes. Correct. yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, yes, and then we go into the vegetable aspect, uh, plants, the green plants, the root vegetables and different parts of the plants. And uh, there are many foods that are edible for most people. And at the same time, we know that uh, the reason why we use herbs is because there are different parts of a plant, they're stronger. And as with uh, the common food ingredients that we consume, they're, they're good enough to be consumed on a daily basis, uh, but also have subtle, subtle medicinal effects. So you want to also distinguish, yes, even common food ingredients like these, cassava, taro, root vegetables, beets, and le uh, leafy greens, such as lettuce and um, celery and even soy, not just the content of it, but also how this, this specific reacts to each body type. It also varies, so you do wanna know what your body type is. Yes, you could imagine aloe uh, as an example. It is uh, 
it, it is a type of a, a cactus. So it's, it has a very, very cold nature and it reduces inflammation in the uh, intestine. And, but those who have the same problem in inflammation intestine and they're considered of a cold body type and that will be aggravating their problem. And also nuts. Some people are good with nuts. Some people are not good with nuts. And yes, you could say, well, you know, um, a tina, peanut, I'm allergic to peanut, but everything else I seem to be okay with. That's actually not true. There's a degree of difference. So if you're not good with one or two of the nuts in, in this category, then rest of the nuts are not good for you, for your body type. So it's not just knowing allergic intolerance, uh, like, you know, hay fever, itchy skin, or, um, not being able to breathe related issue, but this is also related to uh, the impact of your health. What you see related to foods is just the tip of the iceberg. There's 80, 90% that's, or most of the other things that are happening that we don't even recognize that are happening. And so you wanna see them to be good or bad based on one or two negative or negative symptoms associated with these foods. Let's go to the next page. Yes, that includes the food, fruits. Fruits are not born the same. Uh, there's kiwi, there's blackberry, blueberry, strawberry, apples and oranges and peaches and pears and plums. It's some, in general, the fruits are not bad as other type of fruit foods, but they all still have the medicinal effect where if a certain fruit is good for your body type, it's very healthy for your body type. And if it's not so, then not as bad, but still you want to focus on the ones that are definitely helpful to you. Let's go to the next page. And also the grains. Uh, main thing about the grains are uh, carbs. Well, today uh, in general, we do have to reduce the carbs. Because of the modernization, we're not being as active as before, we're more sedentary. So having a lot of sugar in our blood, in our system in one sitting, after one sitting of meal, and, and then after that, sit and not move, that will create inflammation, diabetes, and lead to heart issues and so on. So if you, let's say you existed 100 years ago, compared with you now, uh, likely you are definitely not as active and so you do want to reduce grains in general. But as with the body type, it's more specifically related to whether it's warming or cooling, uh, gluten-containing grains, such as wheat rye, wheat, rye, barley, they are cooling. And that's why those people who are gluten intolerant get intestinal problems, focus issues, and dysfunction within their physiology. Along with that, it, it, those who are okay with gluten, they're fine with that. Uh, rice in general is more neutral, but it has a slight warming nature. So those who are of a cold body type, rice is good. Those who are of a hot body type, gluten will be better than rice. So you just can't blanket gluten as being bad. Uh, and of course, if you're not, not aware, aware of your body type, you want to start thinking about, well, you might think about, well, maybe just in case I will not have or uh, reduce gluten uh, just in case, but if you know your body type, then you know how much to eat and gives you much more control in the variety of foods that you could have. And then the next, spices. Yes, spices are more close to herbs because herbs have a medicinal property. Spices, ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, black pepper, chili pepper, mint, and then there's more oregano and uh, uh, other type of herbs. They're not just for food flavor, but they also have strong impact in one's health. And you could imagine that ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, black pepper, they're probably warming in nature. Mint will be cooling in nature. So that's how you distinguish. And there are some cultures around the world, they've been using these spices for healing. For healing. Uh, so it's just a question of how do we use it specifically. In the past, uh, people have been using spices for preservation of food and enhancement of flavor. It's because there was no uh, refrigeration that was available. So having a lot of spices in the food didn't make sense. Now we do realize that um, uh, spices also have uh, medicinal property to that. So it will be good for your health or it will be bad for your health. 
Let's go to the next page. So the harmful effect of wrong foods. Common examples are allergic intolerant reaction, such as hay fever, atopic eczema, irritable bowel syndrome, fatigue, inflammation. So let's give a, a story about this. Um, we have different openings, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, uh, urination, bowel movement, skin pores. The body does not, when it does not like certain food ingredient, it will attempt to get rid of it through different openings. So it's just a different manifestation. Some people may get hay fever, sneezing, itchy eyes, uh, sinus congestion. So that will be limited to their particular way of getting rid of food. Other people get skin itching and atopic. Atopic means there's no uh, uh, identifiable cause reason for having the skin itching, the eczema. And that can be coming from food quite often, especially nuts. Irritable bowel syndrome, that's another way of body trying to get rid of something through the bowel. And that will be constipation. Well, constipation is more of a dysfunction. And then uh, frequent loose stools will be, that's also dysfunction, but that's another way of body wanting to get rid of something. Inflammation is a reaction against a foreign object. Fatigue is because you're just, uh, your system is so busy fighting off its uh, what it perceives to be foreign that uh, it distributes energy somewhere else. So then your the energy that you should be using for regulation and daily usage does not become optimized, so you get fatigued. And of course, if you go down further with the aggravating symptoms and having these constantly wrong food ingredients that you consume, then you will get organ or glandular dysfunction, other type of organs and glandular dysfunction. It could be hypothyroidism, adrenal fatigue, uh, it could be asthma or liver issues, fatty liver and so on. Let's go, to, go on to the next page. Beneficial effect of correct foods, that would be the opposite. You have a higher quality of living and longevity. What does that mean? That's, that's what we want for our health. What is being healthy? You live in a more quality way throughout the day and you live longer. Your, uh, the disease is minimized, disease is reversed. That's another way of saying anti-aging or that's another way of saying these foods are a tonic, T-O-N-I-C. Tonic is something that helps you in multiple ways. To me, uh, eating correctly means having each of your cells at the cellular level there are multiple physiology that's happening, that's optimized, that's within normal range. So therefore you have a smooth functioning in multiple areas. That's higher quality of living and then you get longevity. And of course, in addition to that, you have healing, increased healing ability. You always, your body always has that ability to self heal. That's why most things come and go without you even recognizing what they were. It's that efficient. If it's a little bit compromised, now you get little here and there and they tend to last and they become chronic. So just by upping its ability just a little bit higher, then you will notice the tremendous impact in the higher sense of well-being. You, you, you heal faster, you heal even better and so on and so on. Yes, and mentally uh, that is also higher focus, clarity, and you feel more integrated and everything seems to work smoothly and fine. Just like uh, a lot of the experience that you had when you were a teenager. You, you, as a teenager, you were walking on the air, you did not really get tired, you just became sleepy by the end of the day, even when you were very active. Now that's how efficient the body should be. And we know that uh, foods were used as medicine through history of time. Uh, there were many different theories, uh, different ways of uh, finding out how foods work. And each culture, each, each society had, had their own way. And when you ask them, how do they work? How do you know that this is how you're supposed to use food as medicine? A lot of times they don't know how to answer that. We just did that because we get a higher rate of getting it right when we do it this way. And then that leads to the question for everyone, how do we make it so that when I do actually get sick, what food ingredients should I use for me in addition to the benefit of that food? So 
there's the benefit of the food and it has to also match you so that it works together with you or you have a double uh, efficiency of the food to help healing you. So knowing the benefit of the food itself is not, uh, it's only part of the story. Benefit of the story, uh, the food is secondary. Primary is what foods align with your body type so that these foods support to help you to self heal. So even if the food is not known to treat a certain problem, that food will help heal you when it works with you. So the foods are not meant to be looked into for their active ingredient. Then what you do is you take out the active ingredient, make it more concentrated and you deliver it like medication and then you get bad side effects. So instead of thinking about active ingredient, think about what about the precursors that led to the active ingredient. So the foods are the precursor so that your body could convert the food into an active ingredient for its usage rather than delivering the active ingredient directly into your body. And yes, for food, you don't want it just for survival. You want it to be for your thriving, right? So for thriving, you do need phytonutrient. For survival, it's fat, carbohydrate, protein, and multivitamins. And society has been talking about that quite a lot, the modern society or the scientific society. Why? because that's all you could study, that carbohydrate, protein, and multivitamin. Ignore totally about the phytonutrients up until a few decades ago because there was no way of approaching in the proper way to study the phytonutrients. We still don't really, but we do have a molecular biology that keeps understanding more about how the phytonutrients work. That's why we have superfoods being more available in the supermarkets. And then now that these phytonutrients are available, who is it good for? Now that's where the body type comes in. Phytonutrient, your specific body type. Then you get to heal more efficiently for longevity, for higher health and well-being. Body type foods plus balanced and organic diet. Yes. Uh, so you, you want to have a balanced diet and you want to have a organic diet. So there's three main ways to eat food. One is body type specific food ingredients. The other is balanced diet. Balanced diet in general is whole food plant-based. More than half your meal has to be plant-based. A little bit of animal meat, a little bit of fat, a little bit of oil, a little bit of carbs, but majority is plants. That to me is whole food, whole food plant-based balanced way of eating. And then there's uh, organic diet, which is referring to eating clean, pesticides, uh, nitrates, nitrites, uh, enhancers, uh, enhancing flavors, and all those additives. You don't want to have so much of that in the food because they add up to be toxin. And perhaps that's the reason why we have uh, increasing cancer rate today. And before modernization, we did not have cancer ratio. So it's likely additives in the food that make them unclean. So you wanna have balanced food, clean food, and food specific with the way your body works. And then you'll get to reduce the allergy. You get to reduce the intolerance. Allergy is immune system reaction acting against something, okay? Intolerance is, means it's a mismatch. So you, you want to minimize immune system reaction. You want to minimize mismatch. Then you get to thrive get to high, have, a, have, have a higher quality of living and longevity, you have increased healing ability, and you get to prevent diseases. Again, uh, your, uh, the way your mind works, there's a more focus, more clarity, and more energy about you. And by the end of the day, you feel more, uh, you, you have the stamina. And it's just, you're establishing biorhythm rather than, oh, I'm so tired, now I'm going to go to bed. Let's go to the next page. Uh, yes, the medical conditions uh, these foods can actually treat. You could actually reverse these problems when you eat correct for your body type. That's acid reflux, ad adrenal deficiency, anxiety, asthma, depression, diabetes, heart circulatory issues, hot flashes, inflammation, irritable bowel, 
uh, and so on. Post-surgical recovery infections and viral, bacterial, fungal infections, you could treat them or prevent them, thyroid problem and others. Well, it's easy to ask for or seek after medication because they have a quick improvement with prescription medications. They're important, they're necessary when it comes to life and death situation. But here's a however. Um, if you are on medication for a long time, you'll notice that you'll need to increase your medication over time. You'll notice that you'll need to add other medications. So over time, the disease actually gets better rather than improve. Uh, so rather than um, cold turkey, stopping the medication, if you're into that, uh, wanting to uh, try the natural way of healing, you want to get better first by eating correct food ingredients, make sure these are correct for you. You're even better than where you're at right now. And then in the future, you start tapering down a little bit of medication at a time, working with your physician. And while you're still having the higher sense of well-being, less pain, less inflammation, better function, then you know you're still healing while you're tapering down on the medication. That will be incremental way of switching over, transitioning into natural way of eating. And yes, you can use foods to reverse these diseases, at least reduce a lot of these problems. Let's go to the next page. And there are four types of bodies. One is called warm dry and the other called warm damp, other called cool dry, and the last one is cool damp. These words were coined by uh, Galen, the Roman physician, the Greco-Roman physician during Roman times uh, with the gladiators, and he was also a physician uh, with the uh, um, uh, the Roman uh, royalties, and he coined these words, and these words were directly a concept from Hippocrates, who created the four temperaments in year uh, around 1300 BC. Okay. So we're still using these words today. And the beauty of these words is that Eastern medicine also recognized these words to be the same as, in meaning, same meaning and same words as the Greco Romans had used 2000 years ago. So this is very exciting. We are un unifying rather than making these separate. So as we unify these different uh, regions of the world, medicine becomes even more, make more sense. And that's through the knowing your body type, okay? So there's four body types and each body type contains two sub body types. The four body types, sub body types are warm, cool, dry, and damp. So you have a combination of both, of two subtypes. For example, uh, me, I'm a warm, damp type. Okay, so that's my body type. Another body type would have a warm, dry as a combination. Another body type would have a cool, dry as a combination. And the last one would have a body type that's a cool, damp as a combination. So you could only get only four possible combinations this way. So knowing your sub body type, because there are cool foods, there's warm foods, there's dry foods, there's damp foods. So let's say you're warm, then you have to eat cool foods. If you're cool, you have to eat warming foods. If you're dry, you have to eat damp foods. If you're damp, then you have to eat dry foods. And because each person has two, if you're warm and damp, then you have to eat cooling foods and drying foods for your body to work better and to self heal. So it's not a yes or no, all or none. You have to focus a lot on the foods that are healing foods and less on the not so healing because food is food. It's not going to be a big problem over time if we eat sporadically a little bit of the negative foods. But majority or most of your foods are positive, beneficial for you, then you will have increased healing ability. Okay, yes. Um, How do you diagnose? That's the thing. Right. Yeah, yes. I was going to go into that. Uh, before I go into that, I was going to tell you what foods are. Let's go, go to the previous page. Uh, what foods are warm, cool, dry, and damp? So I could give you um, a picturing example. Uh, warming foods are 
uh, spices will be a uh, cinnamon, ginger, turmeric, and chicken. Chicken is warming. Brown rice is also warming. Okay. Uh, apple, oranges are also warming. And then cooling foods are something like aloe, cucumber, uh, pork, uh, in general, seafood, uh, and so on. So they're more on the cooling side. And then as with the drying foods, drying foods are, uh, don't think of them as watery. Think of it as more like oily and a lot of protein. So drying, uh, or, or yeah, drying foods are more related to not having as much oil. So for example, lettuce is drying, uh, cabbage is drying. So leafy green vegetables tend to be on the drying side. And then as with the damp foods, it's more like oily food. So uh, nuts are oily, uh, beef, dairy are oily. So if you're uh, allergic or intolerant to, do, to let's say nuts or uh, milk, then that means likely you're a, of a damp type. So eating those foods will make the damp even worse. That's why you get the side effects. Yes, let's go on to the next page now. Um, how do you diagnose your body type? So in general, there's three ways to eat foods, one according to your body type, and the other is eating balanced diet, like whole food plant-based, and the other is to eat clean. You don't want to have a preservative additives and enhancer so much, okay? So as specifically for your body type, then uh, how do you diagnose you? You could diagnose yourself through a psychological way, your personality profiling, and the other is physiology, the way your body works physiologically. And then the third is your physical shape. So there's lots of ways to diagnose your psychological personality. And that's using Unani, uh, using Ayurveda, that's been around for what, five to 7,000 years, and Myers-Briggs 16 personality type, social styles, DISC. So I will go into these uh, different specific ways of self-diagnosing so when i teach then you you will eventually be able to identify your psychological type and therefore associate that with the foods that are good for you and not good for you and then you know what the action is to eat more properly for your body type let's go to the next page and physical physiological characteristics like for example do you get motion sick easily or do you not uh, how's your sleep do you tend to sleep light do you tend to sleep uh deeply and, and so on. And then also food reaction, such as with the stimulants like caffeine or dairy or nuts, food reactions will tell you a lot about what your body type may be. And then let's go to the next page. Uh, physical characteristics, just by looking at your hands and feet and the legs and your torso shape, you notice there in the green, it's a diamond shape, in the yellow, it's an hourglass shape, in the blue, it's a upside down, uh, triangle shape and in the red it's a uh, right side up triangle shape so there are four basic shapes it's not just for fashion but these shapes there's a pattern where many people do fit into these shapes and could tell you which body type you have again there are many ways to diagnose your body type for applying what foods are good and bad for you so I'll be going on to teaching that. It will be uh, on November 22nd uh, at 4 p.m. That will be on Sunday. I will post that. And if you're interested, uh, just respond uh, to, uh, to Amita or me uh, saying you're interested. In the next few days, we'll, we will post up uh, the time and the date for the upcoming uh, self-diagnosis of your type for food as medicine. Right now, let's open up for question and answer. Absolutely. So we are open for question and answer. We'll be posting the workshop um, when we finalize with Dr. Lee. Uh, we are open for questions and we've written our email here, our website, just in case if you need to get hold of us. Uh, yeah, I've written it. So let us know your questions. We're open for questions now. Any comments? Any, any thoughts, anything that you'd like to know? 
Okay. Oh, well, it's interesting uh, that, uh, you know, the Ayurveda also talks about the body types and you talked about other ways people talk about the body types, you know, how it is important. So it's not just only one, um, like only Ayurveda, but there are other systems of medicine that talk about the same principles, right? That's For correct. Yes, that's, that, that's a very good question you brought up because each uh, region in the world uh, varies, there will be different interpretation. Keep in mind, yeah. of course, human beings are human beings. And we know that through globalization, people are going everywhere in the world, especially where I'm at. I'm in Los Angeles area. So I get to see people from uh, continent of Africa, Asia, Middle East, uh, Europe, and people from all over the place. And, and I find body type pretty much the same in every sec from people from every sector of the world. So yeah. there's that distribution and uh, these uh, old systems like Ayurveda or Unani, uh, the constitutional medicine, body type medicine systems have been around for so long and so many thinkers have put in their thoughts to it that you, you see a commonality. There's a mm -hmm. commonality within the human beings and they found commonality within the human beings. It's just that the language is different, uh, yeah. the climate is different, food availability, language, the way people think are different. So there's different angles of viewing the body type constitution. So therefore it seems to be different, but you could also find commonality. And when you do, then you start linking that together and then whatever is different, you could accept that as uh, a, a difference in, in the variety within the people, or it's just different because there's areas that we still do not, are not familiar with. But first thing we should do is to um, knot them all together yeah. or find commonality between each different systems. Then as a whole, we can move forward. So in your uh, thing, you also, do you also use Chinese herbs or it's just only food that, that you would uh, say? Yes, I use Chinese herbs. I use this pro uh, uh, program or the system called Sasang. S-A-S-A-N-G, Sa means four, S-A-N-G means images or four constitutions okay. developed by a Korean physician 150 years ago. And what he did was uh, he took uh, oriental medicine further by associating that with the four basic body types. And uh, he recommended foods and he also recommended Chinese herbs according to the body types. And I still use that today and that is gaining momentum because sure. of such uh, ease of usage and such high rate of uh, good improvement with those uh, Chinese herbs. Okay, okay well, um, any, um, all right, we'd like to wrap up this session if there's any question. If you can't think of any questions, you know, uh, we put our emails there, you're welcome to reach out to us. Um, with that, I'd like to end this session um, for Sunday. Any final comments from you, Dr. Lee, before I wrap up this session? Uh, no other comments other than Yes, look forward to uh, the diagnosing your body type uh, yes. through the information I could get to present. And then you get the list of foods that are good for you and not good for you. And I Absolutely. look forward to sharing that information. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday afternoon. Thank you all of us for watching our sessions. Please give us feedback. Please share our sessions to help other people. These are only educational sessions. So thank you so much. Have a great Sunday afternoon. Bye.